For the past three weeks, they've been on the move through the forest. Every morning, the rangers head from their camp to a new survey zone. That often means a hike of up to 10 kilometers. This time, Abel Siampale and his colleagues reach their destination after a 15-minute walk. They mark the central survey point. Within a radius of 20 meters, the rangers measure the entire stock of trees and catalog the different species. What tree is that? Overall, the inventory includes around 5% of Zambia's Miombo forest. The tallest trees grow up to 25 meters high, providing protection for everything that grows below. But the rangers don't need to climb up to measure tree height. They use the clinometer and tangent method. The more biomass and carbon storing capacities a country's forests have, the more money they can get from international climate funds. The Miombo forest is the world's largest dry forest area. But for years, it's been shrinking, and along with it, its biodiversity, as demand for firewood and farmland grows. Due to population increase, there is certainly a possibility that some of the clusters will be harvested in the nearest future. And that is an indicator showing that there is some possible change on land use that is taking place in these areas. On their way to the next survey area, the rangers can see firsthand how drastically the forest is changing. New farmland is springing up in areas that were previously forest land. Years of monoculture planting has destroyed existing agricultural land and harvests. Abel Siampale explains to residents how they can farm more sustainably, for example, by planting fields with different crops. They need to ensure that they use that same piece of land for a longer period of time. And I think technology now is actually available. Um, extension officers are all over uh, the country now. If they actually interact and be able to get the best methods of utilizing a piece of land for sustainable agriculture, it will really help reduce the levels of you know, land use or forest cover change in many parts of the country. Stopping the swift pace of deforestation is also Noah Zimba's goal. Zimba is a professor of botany and he advises the Zambian government on environment protection. Today he's with his students on an excursion to an aloe plantation. They're learning what alternative sources of income the Miombo forest offers. I'm cutting the blade of an aloe, and if you leave, you can see it's, it's dripping. Yeah, and this is what is very useful. The, the one that appears orangish is the one that normally used for creams. One liter of leaf sap can bring around 220 euros. Noah Zimba is convinced that the forest can be saved if people have alternative sources of livelihood. Just understanding that you can move an ordinary product like this to give you high value returns, mm -hmm. that connection requires some just bit of appreciating that reality. Yeah, but most people think that, okay, it's just a plant that grows everywhere. So what is it for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a common, common plant of the Miombo system. So nobody really pays attention to it. But it's an open secret that you can make coal from wood. Many people in Zambia live off the production or sale of charcoal, with devastating consequences for the forest. Charcoal production is fairly destructive, taking away fairly mature trees uh, to feed the growing energy needs. That, in turn, disrupts the balance of the forest ecosystem. The Miombo system supplies local communities with a lot of things. It supplies them with useful medicinal elements, medicinal plants, edible fruits, mushrooms, uh, and an array of species. But when you alter it by removing the primary species, and then the regrowth comes with the different um, uh, species, those, those species are not as useful as the, the biodiversity that exists primarily. And that's a big problem. Back in the forest, the rangers meet a beekeeper who has several beehives. 
Now he can harvest honey twice a year. That's good news for the forest, too. Beekeeping is actually a conservation activity. It helps actually secure forests because the beekeepers would require their bees to forage within stocks of some vegetation. And so if you promote it on a larger scale, you are actually promoting conservation. By sundown, the rangers have managed to cover another four of the 170 survey zones here. At the camp, Abel Siampali meets the other two teams involved in the forest inventory. They sit down for their first warm meal of the day. The rangers plan to be finished with their inventory by the end of the month. That's when they'll find out exactly what is left of the Miyambo forest.